Hello my friends and welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to continue with the Boots project. I hope everyone has had a great week. I myself had a great week as well. Um, we had a lot of surprises, right? Like a lot of cool stuff. I'm uh, still, we're still working on the on the contest. It's going to be airing this next Monday, okay? I'm going to be uploading this video today, which should be Friday for most of you if you're watching this uh, as we release them daily. Uh, if not, then welcome. Welcome to the channel. And uh, yeah, on Monday, we are going to be announcing the first contest for the channel. We're going to announce uh, where to submit, the things that we're going to be looking for, um, all of the different like details that you might expect. I'm going to be gone for the weekend. It's not that I'm going to be gone, but I'm going to be focusing on finishing the course that I'm uh, releasing next or one of the courses that we're going to be releasing next. So um, yeah, there's not going to be any uploads from me this uh, next couple of days, but there might be a couple of videos here in the channel. So make sure to check them out as well. We also have the Skillshare um, option, so if you want to check it out, Skillshare is offering a, I believe it's like a 10 or 15 days a free trial so that you can check any of our courses uh, in the link down here in the description. With that said, let's go into our um, a boot. There we go. So I finished the retopology for the boot um, off camera just to save a little bit of time. It was like an hour uh, roughly uh, of retopology to make sure that it looked as nice as possible. And let me show you, this is the final result that we get. So as you can see, we were able to capture the silhouette very, very, very nicely. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, so I'm just going to right click and shade smooth here so that we get a very nice smooth uh, mesh so we don't see the polygons. And as you can see, we are holding all of the wrinkles and all of the shapes in a very, very clean and uh, nice way. Now we need to do UVs and uh, we're going to do some automatic UVs. Uh, we're going to be using the UV tools here from, uh, from inside of Blender. I'm going to be honest, uh, you guys know that we've been talking about Blender Maya for the last couple of months. Both of them are powerful. I, I think it was uh, one of you guys, uh, if it was Dr. Ma Dr. Manhattan, if I'm not mistaken, who was mentioning that there were some cools that were really cool in some of, uh, in one software and really cool in the other software. And, and in my experience, after uh, using Maya for so many years and now learning all of the things about Blender and, and uh, even teaching a little bit of Blender, um, I've realized that they're actually very similar. So if you can learn both eventually, it, it's only going to be good for you because you're going to be able to use the best of both worlds. Um, but yeah, uh, maybe we'll have a discussion about which one is better for the industry uh, later on. But for now, let's just let's just keep it simple, please. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to start selecting my edges. I'm going to press Shift and Alt to select the uh, edge loop. As you can see, the edge loop stops once it finds a triangle or a shape that it doesn't know where to follow through. We just go right there, select that one. And in here in the UVs, uh, we just say uh, mark seam. And as you can see, we're going to have a seam right there. Uh, we want another seam in here. So all of this like intersection. We as well are going to be following and adding to the selection with shift and alt. And as you can see, we just like create that thing. That's it. And again, UV and mark seam. There we go. And finally, we need to decide where to place the seam that's going to go through the side. Um, there's, of course, like rules and things that you need to think about when doing UVs. But one of the things that I was told is always try to hide your seams. Like that's the best thing. Like try to get it in crab inside of crevices and in places where it's not going to be as visible. So if you, you guys remember from the from the high poly, we have these bands at the side. So the border of that band is a really good place because we can always add a little bit of dirt there. And that's going to help us hide the fact that uh, we have the... What's the word? The seams. Now, as for how many seams, um, there is a diminishing return in the amount of uh, seams that you have. The more seams that you have, the flatter your objects are going to be. But again, the more cuts you're going to have. And in games, it actually could impact. I, I've never had any project where they are like, hey, you have too many UV seams. But UV seams do get like counted as, uh, as another like little thing to take into account when um when working with uh, with games so in this case i'm just going to do one seam and we're going to do a seam that goes through this side right here through the back side of this boot again if you want we could divide like the front and the back but i think in this case this should be uh, good enough i'm not selecting the whole edge ring because it's going to go all the way into the sole and i don't want that i want to keep the sole as a, as a separate thing so there we go. We'll just go UV and mark seam. And this is pretty much, if you guys are used to Maya, this is pretty much as using the 3D cut and UV seam. But we don't have to have any UVs just yet. We just mark where we would like to have the UVs. Um, and Blender doesn't have as, or at least in, in the, the the time that I've explored, it doesn't have as many like options for UVs as, uh, as what we have with the uh, Unfold inside of Maya. But still really good. So I'm going to press C and go into wireframe mode. I'm going to select all of the faces right here. And uh, I'm going to say uh, UB and then just unwrap. And that's, that's it. Like, 
you couldn't ask for a better UV. This is this is perfectly perfectly fine. One thing we could definitely do is we could grab some of the like the the islands, and actually I'm gonna rotate them. So I'm gonna press R because I would like uh, especially like this is the front of the boot, right? So I would like this front of the boot to be like facing forward. So let's go right there. Now we might need to. I'm gonna use my uh, so like lasso. And I need to move these pieces inside of the of the of the UV, right? So again, G, let's move this one right here. And then we can we can move this one oop, right here. Let's just remove the selection there. I know we could have also selected the islands, but that just I just did it. So there we go. And that's pretty much it. Like, uh, like the this is a, a perfect UB for an object like this one, as you can see. Uh, or if we go back here, hey, where is it? UVs. Where did my UB go? Did I not select it? That's really weird. Give me just one second. There we go. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, it's just not selected when it's an object mode, but that's fine. I'm just going to select this guy. I'm going to say file export selection right here. We're going to export this as an FBX uh, again for just uh, simplicity's sake. I'm going to export it to the to the desktop, which is super, super filled with a lot of stuff. Let's call this boot underscore low. There we go. And then we select the um, um, boot high as well. So we select the boot high file export selection FBX. It is going to be called boot high. And now we're going to jump into uh, Substance Painter. Now, I know some people might be like, hey, you can also like texture inside of um, inside of Blender. And yes, you can. But there's a couple of softwares that are definitely way, way better than Blender and what they do. And uh, Substance, for instance, is one of them. Like, I, I really like the sculpting things that we have inside of Blender for certain assets. It's it's quite handy. But again, like ZBrush is just a D, D software to sculpt, right? So... Um, it's that's why it's so important for you as an artist to always be exploring what's the like what's the current thing that people are using and use that thing right. So let's do 4K. Let's make this thing look super super nice. Let's import the object real quick. And ha, huh, that's really weird. It says my boot. Oh, did I? That was wrong. Oh no, you you know what happened? I think I I might have uh, exported something that we didn't need. Oh, that's really weird. I was pretty sure whenever I want to check if what I exported is right or not, I like to use Marmoset. It's very, very weird because I, I was completely sure that we exported a deboot properly. So let's go uh, desktop boot low. Or did it export it? Oh, OK, OK, yeah. OK, my bad. It exported every single thing. So as you can see, we have the the boot, the camera, everything, because we export this in FBX. Okay, no problem. Give me just one second. So just select this guy again, file, export, FBX, and we need to check this one right here, selected objects, just this simple little thing. I'm, I'm so used to uh, the export selected from Maya. So that's the export low, and then we do the same thing for boot high. So file, export, uh, FBX, and we just select uh, or check selected objects, and this is going to be boot high. There we go. So now we go back to substance file new and we create or we select our boot all low. Hit OK. Let's discard this project. And there we go. Now to make sure that we have things properly, if we press F3, uh, it's going to jump into UV view. F1, it's both views at the same time. F2 is 3D view. And uh, yeah, it's working nice. So now let's talk about the bake. I know baking, uh, it is, it used to be very technical. Nowadays, it's super easy. It's pretty much just like a one click solution. But people still get like confused about what this thing is doing. So I'm just going to very quickly cover what this does for those of you that are uh, new to the whole process. Uh, what baking does is you have your high poly. Imagine this is the detail of your high poly object. And then you have your low poly on top, right? Like the, the recreation that we did. The low poly will will uh, shoot uh, like a race upwards and downwards. And it will find, let's imagine that this thing also goes up like this. It will find all the different changes in shape that you have on the high poly, and it will bake that information down into your object. 
So the tighter you go into the shape of the object, the nicer the object is going to look. Let's say, for instance, that you have like a like this sort of like bevel effect on a high poly. If you were to create a just a flat plane, then yeah, all of those rays are going to find this information, but it's not going to be as good. If, however, you do something like this for your low poly as well, then all of this like faces, they will each shoot arrows in the direction that they're uh, built and they will find the silhouette a little bit better. That's why we always uh, tell students whenever you're doing retopology, you want to capture the shape of your object or the silhouette of your object in the best possible way or the closest you can, right? So um, the one like common mistake that happens, and we're going to see right here if it happens, is when we bake, sometimes the rays do not shoot like high enough or, or, or um, what's the word? Did I not select the boot? It's really weird. I should have selected the boot. Uh, high poly scene was recorded, making it could not be loaded. Ha, huh, that's really weird. Okay. So yeah, well, what's going to happen is we're going to, we're going to technically bring all of this information from this boot into the element. So let's try exporting this thing again. So FBX boot high, just export FBX. Just wait, there we go. So again, just to make sure that this thing got exported properly, let me go into Marmoser real quick. And again, all of the details, all of the things that we have on the high poly should be visible on the low poly. There we go. Yeah, so the high poly is there. Okay, so let's go back to substance. Let's try this again. Bake mesh maps. And we're going to select the boot high. Open. And we bake selected textures. There we go. So yeah, now you see that we are projecting all of the detail in here, but there's a couple of spots that we're missing. See those little spots that are not being like captured? It, it's a little bit difficult to see, but there's just like those those little points right there that means that the low poly wasn't close enough to the high poly to see or to or to visualize what what was there right so so we're not getting the bake how can we change that well if you get that what you can do is you can increase the max frontal distance and increase the max to distance a little bit and try again and now as you can see we're capturing all of the information However, we're getting another problem. And this is also very common. Um, I, I found this happens a little bit more when you do the bakes from other softwares. Maya doesn't tend to do this as much. Uh, but as you can see, we're baking the, the actual like little squares of the high poly, which is not really noticeable when we go like uh, far enough or, or yeah, far, far out enough. But if you want to make sure that this looks as smooth as possible, you also need to shade smooth this guy uh, before exporting. So just file, export again, FBX. Remember, this is a quad high, high poly. So... We could also go back to ZBrush and decimate this further. Let's go back here. And the bake mesh maps again. Just bake. So what I'm expecting now is a softer look. We we're not supposed to see the little squares that make up our high poly. And now our boot's going to look way, way, way better. There we go. Now if we go in, as you can see, we no longer see that effect. Super, super smooth. And that's it. This is our low poly mesh. We have a super low poly mesh and look how much detail we're able to get. Now we need to start talking about like how to build the textures. And uh, I'm going to show you a process that's relatively basic, um, but it's 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 uh, very, very good to, to get a nice result. So first of all, we need to, I like to do a, a quick blocking of my materials. And I know that we have two main materials. We have the rubber for the soles, and then we have the, the main leather. So if I look for leather right here, uh, as you can see, I have this a uh, worn horse leather, which looks very, very good. Uh, but I know not everyone has it. Do we use it? Yeah, let's use it. I know I know that's a little bit... Uh, I, I hate doing this, like using a, a material that not everyone has access to. Uh, for everyone not aware, Substance Painter has this thing called Substance Source. Well, it's not called Substance 3D Acid. So when you're subscribed, I'm subscribed to the... Uh, what's the word? To the... Um... To the ED license of the of the substance uh, files, so every month I get uh, access to thirty points. As you see, I've I've been subscribed for years now. I have a lot of points here. So if I were to look for leather, I could just grab any leather that I want. So it's very very cool because you can get some really really fancy leathers that, that are not available by default. Like this one, this patinated deer leather. That one looks really cool. So if I wanted, I literally just download it and then move this thing into substance like this. Define as a base material, add it to my library, and now every time I open the substance, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have access to that one. So there we go. That one looks really, really good. There's a couple of things that we're gonna fix, of course. The grain is way too big, uh, but I like it. So I'm gonna control G and call this a leather. 
and then I'm going to right click add a black mask and I'm going to press number four to go into fill mode and I'm going to fill in with uh, UVs the boots up here. So now, as you can see, every single part of the boot is uh, selected with leather and we get this other part, which is going to be the rubber. So for the rubber, um, I do believe we have a rubber material here. Oh, no, we don't. Oh, that's really weird. Let me download one real quick. So if we look for rubber, as you can see, we get this, like this vulcanized raw looks very good. I think that one looks quite nice. So, and I've already done, downloaded that, That's the other one of the cool things. Like if you've already downloaded one of the materials, you can just like re-download them um, and you pretty much have access to that one anytime you want. There we go. So I just add this on top, black mask and go there. And there we go. So now we, or actually we control G add the black mask to the group, and now the group is the one that we paint. There we go. So now we have both materials. The first thing you need to do whenever you're working with textures is scale. You need to make sure that the scale of your textures is working good because some of you might say, well, I am using the leather material. Yes, but this leather is super, super huge. This will be like a toy leather or something. So I need to go here and we need to increase the tiling of these things a little bit more until we get an amount of like detail and, and elements that I want. So something like that, for instance, looks quite, quite nice. The other thing I don't like is the direction of the leather. It's a little bit too like random. So I'm going to change the UV projection to triplanar projection. It's going to make it a little bit more uniform. There's going to be a little bit of a blend over here, which I don't really mind. Um, and the last thing that I need to check is the intensity of the height, right? Like every single or not every single texture, but most textures here have this thing called a height information. And the height information is what gives the, the or what changes the surface of the object. But as you can see, the height right now is way, 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 way too much. It's just, it's just incredibly too much. So there's a couple of ways you can change it. You can go to technical parameters and bring the height range down. It's kind of like a multiplier. This is the one I like to use the most, or you can go to the height channel itself and just lower the, uh, the presence of that specific element. And there we go. Now, if we want to, we could even like rotate this thing around. So for instance, we can rotate the, the element, the tiling. So it's like there, we can maybe lower the tiling a little bit. I think it's a little bit too much. Let's try four. That looks good. That way we have some nice, interesting bands, but it's not too much. And I do want the bands on the front to go like in the direction of the, of the sole. So there we go. Something like that looks better. Cool. So now, as you can see, we got this very, very nice looking leather. And then now we can start playing around with, uh, with the elements. So for instance, Let's increase the roughness a little bit because I think it's a little bit too shiny. Let's increase the variation here, maybe in a little bit more. There we go. I do want it to be shiny. Leather, leather tends to be shiny. Now, the color, if I remember correctly on the, on the reference, it's a little bit redder, a little bit darker. So we're going to go a little bit more into like the reds. I really like the fact that this one's already giving us some interesting changes on the, on the elements. And yeah, there you go. Now we're going to do the same thing with the rubber. You can see that the scale of the rubber is really, really like big. So we need to add a little bit of tiling. Let's start with like a four. There we go. We can already see a little bit of the details. Let's go a little bit higher. Let's go like an eight. And then that doesn't look that bad. I like it. Let me bring in the, uh, the texture from the, from the boot, because we're, we're trying to, to get this as close as possible to the, to the actual boot. <laughs> There we go. Let me show you guys like a close up. So yeah, so as you can see, it's really, really dark, and uh, and there's some dark stuff on the on the bottom part as well. So um, let me go to this one first. It's a really red. It's like a really dark red. Something like that. And then uh, this thing pretty much matches the colors, it's like a, has a little bit of a, of a brownish hue. So something like this. Nice. Now, if I take a look at the boot, there's not really like, like every, every sim, everything seems to be part of the same kind of leather. If you, if you uh, take a look, like it's not like one leather is cleaner or clearer or whatever. Everything's just like this dark leather again. Uh, I still think it's a little bit too dark. I'm not sure if it's the picture. I'm gonna lower the variation a little bit on the color so we get a more like uniform color. And we can even go like down here and bring down the luminosity. 
I think something like that looks good. A little bit more. Let's try that. There we go. Now we want to add the details that give the, the boot like the depth that it needs because right now it's very it's very flat. It's a very flat color. And we're going to do this on, on this uh, top part right here. So I'm going to add a, first of all, let's add a leather, another leather. But in this case, I'm just going to duplicate this leather. So control D. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove everything except for the color. And on the color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the luminosity and we're going to go for this sort of like bright uh, effect. So let's go technical parameters. Let's increase the luminosity. There we go. Something like that. It's just the color that we want to get. Now, if we add a black mask to this element and we add a metal edgeware, which I know it's not metal, but it still works very nicely, we're going to get all of the highlights. See that? So we're going to start getting these very, very nice highlights in certain parts of the uh, of the boot. We can, of course, increase this effect, give it more, more detail to the boot. Look at that. Very nice. Very close to what we got, by the way. And I like to change this to linear dodge because it multiplies the colors and makes it a lot nicer. One thing that I don't like about this is that uh, on the on the image that we have here on the on the reference, those like spots tend to be a lot softer. So what can we do? We can add a filter. So I'm going to add a filter and we're going to use a blur filter. And the blur filter, as the name implies, will blur out the effect. So we are going to be able to uh, to create this uh, this effect that we want, but without being like too overwhelming, right? Uh, you can, of course, like reduce or, or increase the amount of color. I'm going to reduce it a little bit. I usually don't like leaving anything like at 100%. It's very, it tends to be really, really harsh. And now to, to give this a little bit more um, artistic uh, finesse, I'm going to add a paint layer. I'm going to go to my brushes over here. I'm going to use like a soft brush. I really like this. Uh, no, something a little bit softer like this one, soft irregular. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide certain spots. Like I don't want to have this or like damage everywhere. That way, uh, it, it's kind of like uh, you guys know my trick or the, the, the thing I like to do with textures where I'm going to be uh, or where I normally, what's the word? I uh, use a multiplier to, to remove some like dirt and stuff. Well, it's pretty much the same thing, but without adding that specific element, like manually doing it. Now let's add a dirt pass. So I'm going to add another layer, fill layer, and we're going to use, in this case, a black color. Sometimes I like using, uh, there's another little trick that I like, uh, the rust. I like using a rust layer, but without uh, anything except for color, because the rust has like changes in, in, the, in the tones, like this little like specks of color and stuff. And it really looks very nice when, when you like use, um, use it. So I'm going to use a dirt here and let's increase the dirt a little bit. And this is definitely going to be something like an overlay. There we go. Because the overlay will darken pretty much everything. So let's increase this quite a bit so we can see this effect. It's also quite soft. So I'm also going to add a filter and it's going to be a um, blur filter to soft this effect, soften up. And here I'm actually going to remove some of the triplanar blending because I don't want there to be as much dirt on areas that are not like crevices and stuff. And this, oh, sorry, it was not the triple line, it was the, the crunch amount. There we go. So we can increase the, the dark spots on the crevices, as you're seeing right there, but not everywhere. And that's also going to give the whole thing way, way, way more depth. Now it's a good time to maybe consider adding the roughness back in. And, uh, and if we go to the roughness channel, because we don't have a slider here, we can change the roughness here and play around so that those areas are slightly less uh, shiny than others. And at any point, which is exactly what I'm about to do, I'm going to add another paint layer. And I'm going to remove some of that like dark spots from a couple of areas. There we go. That's looking quite, quite, quite nice. How are we doing on time? Oh, already 24 minutes. I'm, going to, I'm just going to do one uh, one more thing that I want to show you on this one, guys. And then we'll leave uh, the second part of the texturing a little bit more advanced texturing for the, for the next one. And what I want to add is just some random scratches. So again, here on the leather, I'm actually going to add another fill layer, just color and roughness, maybe a little bit of height, just like going down. And we're going to add this sort of like beige color. 
black mask and we're going to add a field layer and there's a very cool field layer called scratches. So this grunge scratches, and as you can see, we get scratches everywhere. We can change the amount of scratches, which in this case, I want to keep it simple and we can change the tiling. So I am going to add a couple more tiles. So let's say three. So the scratches are smaller. And again, we can go back here and reduce the, the intensity a little bit. And that's just going to add a little bit of extra detail to the, to the boot. And again, I would definitely go here at a paint layer and say, Hey, maybe this areas, I wouldn't expect there to be as many scratches like on this areas, maybe just areas where, uh, where I would expect my character to be, um, to be like having more trouble. Let's increase the roughness on the rubber a little bit more. And there we go. I think we're in a really, really good position. I think the dark color, this one's a little bit too much. So let's, let's lower it a little bit. It's also, I, I think the original letter, this patinated deer that we're using, it's a little bit splotchy. So I'm going to reduce the grain intensity. There we go. That looks a little bit better, a little bit more. So I do want to see a little bit of the, the leather effect. But I don't want to be super obvious, right? That's it. Not bad. Not freaking bad. Look at that. That looks very, very nice. Like warm leather, which is exactly what we want, right? So yeah, that, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to stop the video right here. Um, in the next one, we are going to be talking about advanced texturing. Again, I'm probably not going to be able to upload this weekend, but hopefully by Monday, uh, we'll have more, more stuff up so that you can uh, continue learning from all of these tips and tricks. Remember that every single comment, share and like helps us grow as a channel. And if you leave a comment, this might be the selected video where I'm going to be picking the random comment for the end of the month uh, giveaway. So that's why uh, saying hi or just leaving your general opinion is always, always um, appreciated. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye bye.